Magic of Math here, and today we're going to answer a standardized math test question that we are asked to make an inference from data. So we're going to show you how to do that today. Here's our question. The population of a city is 10,000 people. A researcher wants to estimate how many people in the city own a car. The researcher surveys a random sample of 240 people and records these results. We know that 180 people own a car and 60 people do not own a car from this random sample of 240 people. Based on the sample results, which bar graph shows the best estimates rounded to the nearest 500 of the number of people in the city's population that own a car and the number that do not own a car? So I would ask you to pause the video here and try to solve this on your own and then come back and see the solution. Welcome back. So we're gonna begin by understanding that we are looking for the best estimate rounded to the nearest 500 of the people that own a car and the number that don't. So we're looking to see which one of these four bar graphs represents this data. We know that the population is 10,000 people. So that the bar graph that is correct is gonna represent a total of 10,000 people. So let's start by understanding what that looks like on the bar graph. This bar graph, own a car, has 2,500 people. So the number of people here is represented in thousands. So if I go to this bar and go over to my axis, my y-axis, it is halfway between two and three, which is 2.5 in thousands is 2,500 or 2,500. So do not own a car is gonna be 7,500. That together has a sum of 10,000, so it could be graph A. Graph B, each bar is at 5,000 people. 5,000 and 5,000 is 10,000, so it could be bar graph B. C, we can already see that we have 2,000 people represented owning a car and 1,000 that do not. Bar graph C cannot be one of our answer choices because it only represents 3,000 people, not 10,000 people. Now let's look at bar graph D. Here we're at 7.5 or 7,500, and over here we're at 2,500, and the sum of these two bars is indeed 10,000. So we've eliminated one of our answer choices. Now let's go back and see that our researcher took a random survey of 240 people. That was a random sample. Of the 240 people, 180 people owned a car, and 60 people did not own a car. So if we take our first data item, which is 180 people out of the 240, we can use this to predict how many own a car out of 10,000. So on your calculator, 180 times 10,000 divide by 240 will give you 7,500. That's using cross product property. So now we can see that owning a car on the bar graph should be 7,500 people. Over here, we can see that we can rule out bar graph A because it represents owning a car as 2,500. That does not match up. Bar graph B is 5,000, does not match up, so it cannot be bar graph B. We have 5,000, not 7,500 owning a car, which leaves us one bar graph that could be the possible answer. We have 7,500 owning a car here. Now, if you wanted to be doubly sure, we could take the extra ratio here, 60, do not own a car out of 240. So 60, using cross products property, 60 times 10,000, divide by 240 will give you 2,500. And we can see that that checks, and it's 2,500 do not own a car. And our correct answer here would be bar graph D, representing this random sample. I thank you for joining me today on learning how to make an inference from data. And that's the magic of math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.